Tuesday morning, we had a fuel oil delivery at the house, both to fill the tank at the house and the one back at the shop. There's only one problem. The hose reel in the back of the truck got tangled up. And until this problem's fixed, nobody's getting any fuel oil today. And if we don't have fuel oil, we don't have heat in the shop. It's pretty tight quarters in the back of that truck, especially around that hose reel. So, guess who ended up inside trying to fix it? This is funny. You poor guys. Send that to my boss. Huh? You have to send that to my boss. <laughs> I feel bad for you guys. This is crazy, like big chunks spaghetti. All right. Thankfully, Jeremy was able to get the hose reel untangled and get the thing back up and going. So once we had that fiasco dealt with, it was time to get busy inside the shop, trying to figure out what the problem is with the alternator on the Malibu. While I was busy making some phone calls about this alternator situation, Kenny went ahead and swept out Billy's dually for him and got it all cleaned up after our trip down to Tennessee. Once we had the dually all cleaned up and we had everything unpacked and the tools put away, it was time to start working on some suspension changes on the Malibu. Currently, the lower trailing arms are adjusted to a position that makes the suspension way too aggressive with the amount of power the new engine makes. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the rear wheels off of it, make these suspension changes, and take this opportunity to clean up the wheels and the brakes, shocks, and rear end housing at the same time. Kenny goes ahead and raises the lower control arm rear mounting point to the top hole to lengthen the instant center. I'll take some time at the end of this video to explain why we're doing this. For those of you that may not understand what the instant center does or how it affects the car's ability to hook. Anyway, while Kenny's working on putting the rear suspension back together, Jeremy and I jump in the 64 to go see Mark down at A1 to talk about this alternator problem. And we needed to check out our test spot because the weather's decent enough today. If the road's clean, I wanna try and make some test hits on the Malibu once we get the car put back together. Once we checked out the test spot, we headed down to Buckeye Lake to see Mark at A1 Auto Parts. Based on Mark's calculations, he feels we need a higher amperage alternator to keep up with the amount of load that we're putting on the electrical system. I just hope that he's got a plan to come up with something better than the one we've been using. What? Do you have a plan to attack this situation with my alternator? Well, I think I do. All right. As I, what is my plan? You kept selling us a low amperage all day. Well, we had a we had a sheep's heart and a grizzly bear's body. That's is that what it is? That's exactly what it is. So I feel that same way sometimes. Yeah, actually, our problem is somebody keeps bolting shit into the car. Oh, and it requires electricity. So, so I think we overloaded the system. That's what the problem is. So you have ordered me in a higher amperage alternator. I have. When will it be here? It'll be here tomorrow. Another day? Well, another day. Well, it's not like special. I'm using it. This is special, but it comes with special instructions because it said that due to the higher output alternator, it needs to be installed by a professional technician. A professional technician. Exactly. Exactly. That could be a problem. It might be. You should have seen him this morning. Was it good? Oh yeah, we had a fuel oil delivery and the fuel oil delivery hose got tangled up inside the back of the truck. Oh. Uncle Bucko to the rescue. Really? I don't like I gotta do your job, I gotta do the fuel guy's job too. Was he in there wrestling it? He was up there wrestling it like he loved wrestles all those big hoses. Like a big anaconda. <laughs> all right guys, so we're back here at the shop. Kenny's got the rear suspension all back together, got the rear tires on. Uh, we're gonna go try and make a test hit real quick because the test spot down there looked pretty decent when Jeremy and I went through there earlier today. Uh, it's supposed to snow quite a bit tomorrow, so our time for testing is <laughs> very small. Uh, it's pretty decent out there today. It's fairly warm. The road's relatively clean. So we've made this suspension bar adjustment change on the back. Let's go see what happens. Now the situation that we're fighting with the rear suspension on the Malibu is that the instant center is set way too short. It was fine for the lower horsepower 355, but with this new 421, the leverage points of the rear suspension is causing it to separate too quickly and upsetting the front and rear weight bias of the car as it leaves the starting line. I had been trying to control the separation with shock adjustments, but in the end, the best thing for me to do is to change the bar angle and start over with my shock settings. Part of the problem that I'm fighting with this car is that it's got a lot of power and it's extremely nose heavy. So the proper shock settings and instant center is critical to making this car hook and stay planted once the car starts moving forward. After our first initial test hit, I loosened the rebound on the rear shocks two clicks 
and tried it again. Now, instead of trying to take bite away, I'm trying to put a little bit of bite back in the rear suspension from where we were before. The end result of the second test hit was nearly perfect shock settings front and rear. But now a new problem surfaces. The tire pressure for the amount of traction is too low. At 13 and a half PSI, the tire is wadding up and driving over itself, causing a loss of traction about two feet out. A telltale sign of insufficient tire pressure are these paddle marks on the road. So we go back to the shop and increase the tire pressure from 13 and a half to 15 PSI. While we were back at the shop, I went ahead and put two clicks of rebound in the front shocks to try and slow the front suspension down in an attempt to keep the car from unloading the tire when the front suspension reaches the end of its travel. The end result was nearly perfect tire pressure, but unfortunately the front shock setting hurt the 60 foot. On a car this heavy with this long of a wheelbase and this much nose weight, it's critical to get the front end as high as possible without maxing out the travel too quickly and unloading the rear tire. What we're basically fighting here is to get the front suspension maxed out and get the nose up before the torque converter really starts to couple up and apply power to the rear tires. And although we didn't knock this out of the park, we definitely know where the limits are with the front shocks and the suspension bar angles that we have now. So that brings us to Wednesday morning. The weather forecast was predicting six to eight inches of snow last night, but thankfully we only got about three inches of heavy slush. The cold, gloomy, wet weather definitely makes it difficult to get motivated. But after watching back some of the videos and editing last night, I realized there's another problem that I need to take care of regarding the braking system. The original master cylinder on the Malibu is starting to give trouble, and I figure now is the perfect time to not only change out the master cylinder, but to add a line lock while we've got the thing apart. So first thing Wednesday morning, I go down to see Mark at A1 and pick up some brake fluid and hopefully pick up this brand new high amp alternator that he's ordered in that's supposedly rated at 180 amps. You're spinning 6,000, it's peaking at 180. A buck 80. It stays there until you break it. Hopefully this alternator does the trick. After I left Mark's, I drove straight into Jeg's to go pick up a new line lock kit for the Malibu. I hung out in the showroom for a little bit and waited on Mr. Craig, the store manager, who brought out a couple different options for me. One being the Hurst roll control kit, and the second being this Biondo unit, which I feel is gonna work a little bit better for my application with the space constraints that the Malibu has underneath the master cylinder behind the wheel well. When I got back from Jeg's, we started the process of removing the original master cylinder off the brake booster. Unfortunately, the original master cylinder was starting to fail and the brake pedal would fade as I'm trying to stage the car. I had Kenny go ahead and clear coat the new unit that's aluminum while I start working on a carburetor for Tony and Tess. This is the E85 carburetor that I originally built for Tommy and Billy's trucks when they were on nitrous. It's always been a really good carburetor until recently when Tony and Tess have experienced a couple little mishaps with a nitrous kit. A leaking nitrous solenoid caused a little bit of an explosion and bent the throttle blades while we were down in New Orleans. So I'm replacing the stock cast base plate with this new billet aluminum unit from ATM. And while I've got the carburetor part, I wanna take the opportunity to try some of this Jax Wax metal polish and polish up the main body, which has gotten corroded terribly from the humid saltwater air that we experienced while we were down near the coast. I was afraid the center section was ruined, but the Jax Wax metal polish brought it back good as new. Once I had the center section all cleaned up, it was time to transfer the main body onto the new billet base plate and check the jetting in the carburetor. The 4.5 power valve that was in it is a little bit too low of a number, so I switched it up to an eight and a half and put the jetting back the way I had it when I originally built this carburetor years ago. If we get some decent weather here soon, I'll put the carburetor back on the Mustang and go out and tune it a little bit before Tony and Tess make it back to Ohio. Anyway, as I was finishing up that carburetor, Jeremy was just getting started putting the new master cylinder back on the Malibu. Then it was time to run the car up on the lift, remove the driver's side front wheel, and figure out how we're going to plumb and mount this new line lock solenoid to the frame. The line lock helps lock the front wheels and allows the rear wheels to spin free during a burnout. So Jeremy starts the engineering process on this project about the same time that Allison showed up with a new batch of posters. The one she brought out tonight is a new release. The poster is based off of a photo taken during our recent trip down to New Orleans. The photo was captured by photographer Caitlin Ward of Caitlin Ward Photography. The photo was taken during third round of small tire when Billy beat the Beaterbaum Mustang driven by Joey Heichel 
out of Nebraska. The posters of this legendary matchup are available along with these new hoodies on gen2garage.com. After I got done checking out Allison's new posters and the new hoodies, I decided I'd try and polish up these front wheels while they're off since we're missing a fitting and we can't finish up the line lock installation tonight. Tomorrow we're gonna finish this project, right? You're not feeling very good. No. You tried to call in sick today. Well, luckily I have this wonderful Malibu to work on while I'm sick. So that brings us to Thursday morning when Vicki had a Zoom meeting for her work in her office. And evidently she didn't want anybody to notice that her Christmas tree was still up. So she took the Christmas tree out and put it in the dining room where I told her maybe she should just put the damn thing away. That went over like a lead balloon. She did eventually relent and took the Christmas tree to the basement like the Grinch. She does have a few errands to run today, so I went out and started up the Suburban for her and let it melt off while I head out to the garage. I used some of that Jack's Wax metal polish to polish all the chrome and the wheels on the car while Jeremy went down to see Mark. What do you want? Is that fitting so I can get this William? One? Yes. Hey, you know, I'm seeing out here it's cold because it's curbside pickup because you're sick and I want you in the store. Here's your fitting so you can finish your project. It's cold out here. Just toss it in the window. Trust me, I don't want to be here either. I think you Tylenol will call me in the morning. I've got enough chemicals in my body to kill a whole nest of no, rats. I know. Jeremy's evidently picked up some kind of bug and he's not feeling very good at all. So he definitely wasn't impressed when he came back to the shop and found out we had some other braking problems on the Malibu as well. We ended up having to put new calipers, pads, and flex hoses on this thing while we've got it apart. Squeeze in there and pump the pedal. Squeeze in there? Yeah. Is that a fat joke? Maybe. You want some Vaseline? So while I'm helping Jeremy bleed the brakes on the Malibu, I get a phone call from my buddy Uncle Jimmy Dale down in Texas. He's at Nitrous Express this morning, filling nitrous bottles, and he's all worked up over this race he's promoting down at the gut, AKA Yellow Belly Dragway. And he's also wanting to flex on me a little bit. Oh, you think there's any way we can get this intake on my small block? He wasn't flexing on me too hard after lunch though. I don't know what he ate. I don't know what they put in that sandwich. Uh. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I got a hot rod. Man, I'd knock the cracker right out his barrel. Well, I'm gonna give you a chance to do it. April 7th and 8th, Yellow Belly Drag Strip from Small Tire Gangster. You got four months, I don't wanna hear any excuses. You got time to be there. You call your baby mama, let her know you ain't getting the kids that weekend, all right? Call your mama, let her know, hey man, old girl may be bringing the kids over, all right? Call your boss, let him know, I ain't working Saturday, man. It's Easter weekend, and I gotta go ask for forgiveness on Sunday after I act a fool Friday and Saturday. April 7th and 8th, Yellow Belly Drag Strip. You wanna be there, all right? I'll see you soon. All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop. So it's uh, kinda late right now. <laughs> we had dinner tonight with Jeff and Tiffany and Tommy and Allison. It was Jeffrey's 52nd birthday today, so happy birthday to Jeff. If you guys would like to tell Jeffrey happy birthday, leave it in the comments. Uh, we had a really nice time tonight. We went out to Longhorn Steakhouse, took Jeff and Tiffany out for dinner, and went to get ice cream at Grader's afterwards. Really nice time, much appreciated. It's always a good time having dinner with Jeff and Tiffany. So as you've already seen in the video, we are headed to Texas Easter weekend right? We're headed to the gut, aka Yellow Belly Dragway. This will be our first time as a family racing legally in the state of Texas. We've been to Texas. We've raced in Texas before, but not legally. We've never been able to have um, spectators come and watch, fans, whatever, uh, that's never been the case. We've always been on the down low when we're in Texas because we've raced on the street in Texas every time we've been to Texas. So obviously, if you've been watching my channel here lately, you've seen that I've been testing and working on this car quite a bit. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a good reason <laughs> because there's some races coming up that I would like to go to uh, with the car for some daily driver classes. Um, and it's tricky to take a car as heavy as this Malibu is and go as fast as I'm trying to go with it um, without cutting the car up 
uh, lightening the car up and more or less just making a slow race car out of it. I don't want a slow race car. I want a fast daily driver. So uh, if you notice in the clips I just showed, the car is sitting on scales right now. Uh, Billy brought his four corner scales out. We set the car on scales earlier tonight uh, before we went to dinner. And uh, the car at this moment does not have a full tank of fuel. It's close. I think it's probably five or six gallons short of a full tank of fuel. And uh, let me show you what the car weighs right now without me in it. All right, we're going to lower the car down on the scales. We'll see where it comes out at. Okay, the car's all the way down. 3490 without me in it. 1043 pounds on the left front, 921 on the right front. 709 on the left rear and 817 on the right rear. Now here's the thing, my, my garage floor that the car is sitting on right now is not level uh, and that's going to throw my corner weights off. However, the overall weight of the car is correct. Now we did weigh the car earlier tonight when Jeremy was here with me in the car and I'll go ahead and show you that clip right now. It was 37.89 with me in the seat and the nitrous bottle is probably two or three pounds light and it's probably five gallons short on fuel having a full tank. So I talked to you guys a little bit earlier in this video when we were testing about instant center. And I wanna to try to explain a little bit in uh, layman's terms, I guess, what that means. So as you saw in the video from earlier in the week, we moved the lower trailing arm mount, okay, from that hole where you can see where the washer has been, we moved that bolt up. And what that does is reduce the uh, angle of the lower control arm. And that basically moves the instant center forward on the car. Your instant center is basically with the suspension uh, set at your neutral ride height. If the car was sitting on the ground, that lower control arm would not be in the angle that it's at right now, okay? It would be up and the, this bar up here would actually be pointed down. If you were to draw a line off the end of that trailing arm and off the front of this trailing arm, okay, that, those two lines would intersect somewhere out here in this door. And that is your instant center. Now, the farther you move that instant center forward, uh, the more weight off the front of the car you're gonna pick up and put on the back tires. The, the thing of it is, the farther forward the instant center is, uh, the less initial leverage you have to plant the tire into the track or into the street. It's one of those things where if you've got a nose heavy car like this Malibu is, you really have to put your instant center out far enough that you can get that weight off the front of the car picked up and move to the back. Now this goes uh, without saying that the more power you put to it with a nose heavy car, obviously the farther forward you need to have the instant center. Uh, this car worked extremely well with the 355. It didn't make a whole lot of power, but with the 421 in it, it's a whole different story. So the more power you put at a nose heavy car like this Malibu, uh, the more you have to focus on your suspension ge geometry to get it right. Obviously it's making more power. It's going to try to accelerate harder. But the fact of the matter is without the proper instant center and without the proper shock tuning, this thing's not going to go anywhere. Now, obviously if I wanted to move some weight around, I could do some things like move the battery to the trunk and I'm not interested in doing that. This is my daily driver. I want it to be my daily driver. I want it to function as my daily driver. I'm not interested in making a race car out of this. I'm not interested in uh, cut off switch on the back of the car. I'm not interested in a battery being in the trunk and taking up trunk space. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm leaving this car exactly the way it is and I'm going to make it work as best I can uh, the way it is. I do have some plans to make some upgrades to the front suspension. There's a possibility I may put some tubular uh, upper and lower control arms on this car to gain a little bit more suspension travel. Obviously as you can see it needs an alignment. 
uh, but I've also ordered some longer or taller upper ball joints to allow me to get a little bit more suspension travel. And briefly, I spoke with Doug Cook today at Motion Raceworks about a set of TBM brakes for the front of the car. I wanna to talk to Doug about it because this is a daily. Uh, on, although I am interested in losing some weight off the car, obviously, especially rotating weight off the front, uh, I am concerned that the car is heavy uh, and I need good braking. So I wanna to talk to Doug about that. I'm not sure if that's the right direction to go with brakes, but um, obviously I had to put front brakes on it today because of the problems that we found with a brake hose and a caliper, and I just had to put it back together, get it back on the ground so I can drive it and test it for now until I make a decision on what I'm gonna do in the future with the front brakes. So that's gonna about do it for tonight's video, guys. Uh, today, technically is Friday. It's like 3.30 in the morning, I think, maybe three o'clock in the morning right now. Um, I had initially thought about going testing down south with the car this weekend. However, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Um, I can't say that it won't, but I haven't had much luck in finding some place to test yet this weekend. Uh, the only day that looked decent the last time I looked was Saturday, and I was thinking about going to Shadyside, but it's very questionable whether the weather will be decent, and that's like an eight-hour trip down there one way, and... Uh, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. I know there's a there's a front side no prep down uh, at Darlington. However, they've scraped all the rubber off that deal, and that's not really what I'm trying to do right now, um, especially on a drag radial. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how much power I can put down in my shock settings, and I'm trying to I'm trying to go fast with the car right now, or faster. And that's not going to be the place to do it with the amount of rubber that they've taken off that track down there. From what I understand now, I haven't seen it myself, but I've just been told that it's pretty bare. And that's just not a really good place to take uh, a car like mine on a radial. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm trying to find someplace closer to home, but so far I haven't come up with anything. But you never know where you may see me turn up next. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing, commenting. We really appreciate it. Maybe see somebody this weekend down south. Hard to tell. Mm -hmm.